Good evening, Fernwood. It is your designated driver, Neil, and it's time for us to have some responsible fun with another episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Today, it's time for episode 208 from January 19th, 1976. Let's take a look at yesterday. Mary and Pat went out of town to visit a rabbi to get advice for Pat about the domestic abuse she has been receiving from Garth. Pat plainly tells her story and her perspective in the situation and says that she has done everything to avoid this. And the rabbi listens and says that since Patty has exhausted all of her options that it would be okay for her to leave Garth. But when Pat lets slip that she would be taking Philip, he changes his mind and says, taking a son away from a father is an awful thing, leaving Pat more confused than ever. Nearby at Lou's place, Lulu continues to wreak havoc on the men of the diner. Max Slattery comes in and offers a ring to Lulu, and Lou tells Lulu that he has put the diner up for sale so that she can get out of this place. And they get a visit from a very lost Patty who's looking for directions back to Fernwood, but she doesn't see Lulu at all. And when Pat leaves, Lulu gets the idea that maybe visiting Fernwood could be a neat thing. Back in Fernwood, Merle is calling the Bide Wee Motel to find out if Wanda has been visiting with May. He gets a knock on the door and it's Mary Hartman with a housewarming gift and a mayor congratulation gift. Mary lets on about some of her anxieties and that's mainly that Tom has been struggling with money and asks Merle for help. And Merle says that he's gonna get on it. And as Mary hesitatingly gets up to go, Merle offers his love to the family at which point things get really awkward. And then this happens. And then at the Bidewee Motel, Wanda and May talk strategy about the Four Plays Fair Play campaign. May is feeling a bit apprehensive after the men of the factory got a bit threatening with her at the Capri Lounge. She knows that the men are angry and that that is not helping the cause and that she doesn't want to start a war between the sexes. And Wanda gets the idea that instead that they should start a strike, that the women of Fernwood should withhold sex from their husbands and that that is the next stage of the campaign. And they are suddenly interrupted by banging through the door as police officers come in and raid their space They've been sent over by a commission in Fernwood and they're taking down all of Wanda and May's work off of the wall. And Wanda tells May that Tom was in charge of this commission. And May thinks that it's revenge because of the VD scare from just about a year ago. And everyone, that was yesterday's episode. A lot of switches got flipped, so I think we gotta see what gets turned on today. Wait, where are you going? Tom, that breakfast square contains everything that you need for a well-balanced breakfast. You do not need me. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you angry at me about something, huh? Are you angry about last night? Is that it? Well, isn't that why you're angry? Come on, come on. This is not the kind of stuff we gotta argue about. Now, come on, sit down. Your breakfast square is melting. Look, I, I know we didn't see kind of eye to eye last night. I know that, but... Aren't you going to eat it? It's very good for you. Look, I'm sorry I called you pushy. I'm sorry. I, I know that doesn't help. Of course, you don't have to eat it. You know, you could just, you know, nibble at it very gently uh, if you wanted. What, what did you say? What? Eat it, Tom. It's getting cold. All I'm trying to say is that I can't make love according to an instruction book or a, or a report or a sheet of paper or somebody coaching me step by step in my ear. Okay, I, I can understand that, Tom. I, I really uh, can understand how that could be, you know, very awkward and uncomfortable. Um, I, I don't want to discuss this anymore, okay? 
Okay, okay, okay. We won't discuss it, okay. I mean, after two thousand years, a woman comes along who finally will tell you what to do, and you're not interested. I mean, I find that incredible. No, it's incredible that for 2,000 years you were perfectly happy, and then along comes Mayolinsky, and you're miserable and I'm no good. I never said you were no good. Well, that's what you meant. You meant that. Okay, Tom, let's just forget it, okay? I'm sorry, okay? Okay, 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 okay. I'm sorry, too, I'm sorry. Okay. It's like an elevator. Oh, come on, Mary, come on. No, I'm just, I'm just saying that it's like a, it's like, all I'm talking about is I'm trying to explain how to get the elevator to the penthouse. Mary, come on, that's come on, come on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, do you want Heather to hear this, do you? No, but t Tom, I just really want to know why it's wrong to try to find the right button to push. I mean, I'm really confused about it, I don't understand. Well, I'll understand. tell you why, you want to know what's wrong? It's because you're pushing me, and I can't be pushed. I mean, it makes me feel like I've been a fool my whole life. And when I feel like a fool, that turns me off. Well, you feel like a fool. Well, how do you think I feel? Needing Mayo Linsky to tell me to tell you what to do for me. All right, Mary, I do not want that woman's name mentioned in this house again. I don't want it. Okay, Tom, forget it, please. We're, this is ridiculous. I mean, she's just the elevator operator, that's all. Now, listen to me. I know this is, this is very embarrassing, but it's no different from my coffee. I mean, I used to think instant was wonderful, and then I found drip. Oh, my God. What, what have I done to deserve this? What? Okay, what? Tom. What? Okay, Tom. I'm really sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I think maybe I've been a little hard on you. I'm, I'm really sorry about it, okay? It's, it, but it, it's, 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 it's nature. That's all. It's, just, it's, it's nature. Nature wants to have some fun with sex. It's not me. All right, Mary, that is enough. That's enough. Okay. It's like building a fire, Tom. It's like rubbing things together in a very steady, gentle way so that you get a rhythm that you can keep going for a very long, long time. All right, Mary. If you keep talking like this, I'm not even going to be able to do it normal. Normal? No, after what we've been talking about, after what I just said, you still call your way normal? Can I be here now? How long have you been there? Oh, it doesn't matter, Grandpa. Come in and sit down. Come in and sit down and have, have some, have some uh, breakfast with us. Here. Here's some breakfast and here's some coffee. Tom, I know what we're going to do. Let's ask Grandpa Mary. how he feels Mary, about Mary. this. No, no, Grandpa, in your opinion... If people have found a way of doing something that is very good, but that it is possible they can find a way that's better, should they do it? You're talking about the Olinsky sexual report, aren't you? Yeah. That's all anybody can talk about these days. What I don't understand is why people talk about it. They should be doing it. Mary, if you can make things better, make them better. But if you can't, don't. Good. That's good. That that was really of uh, no help at all. Treachery. Double talk. Ugliness. Evil. Oh, Tom. How could you? How could you? Wait a minute. How could I what? A room full of goons broke into my motel room last night and impounded all my materials. What does that mean, impounded? Don't look at me. They said they were sent by the Commission on Community Standards. They said that? Yes, what is with this town? I came here to bring an enlightenment, not the plague. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Now, I'm the commissioner of that commission, and I swear to you, May, I did not order that raid. I didn't. Well, then who did if you didn't? I mean, who is out to get me, and what are they going to do next? Probably nothing. How are you feeling? Did you... Did you sleep okay, huh? Is, is it is it itchy inside all them wrappings, honey? Well, just 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 remember, sweetheart, that if it's itching, it's healing. And what I want you to concentrate on right now is healing, honey, because uh, I need you back in these ever loving arms. I just expect you to to jump right out of that bed and jump right back in my arms any day now. Charlie. Oh, Hi, 
Martha. How are you? Charlie, I'm so glad you're here to keep me company while I'm visiting here with Loretta. Charlie, this is Alan. Alan? Mm -hmm. A Alan was so comforting to me. You know, in the many weeks when George took off from reality. Martha, I just want you to know something. I, I really do sympathize with you. I mean, I know how it is to lose something as close to you as a house is. Well, thank you, Charlie. But I'd just rather not talk about it now. You know, I, I noticed that cute little wreath there on the door made of uh, toilet paper. Yeah. Now, whoever... Who Oh, that was made by the gray ladies. You know the gray ladies? They, they, they're those older ladies that dress up in pink, and they come around and they volunteer for the hospital and doors and like that. Oh, what a wonderful idea. And what a wonderful idea for me to occupy my time, you know, during the day. Of course, my time is occupied already now by the sheer terror of the poor house. But once that is all done and over with, I would like to volunteer to help those less fortunate than my tragic self. That is the sweetest thing. You are the sweetest person. Would you do me a favor? Mm hmm? Would you, would you pray with me for Loretta? Oh, that would be a pleasure, Charlie. Lord, this here is Charlie and Martha, both of us praying to you to bring back Loretta for a while longer here on earth before you fly her up to be an angel in heaven with you. Amen. Oh, Charlie, that was just beautiful. Oh, Charlie, look. What? It's all gone. Loretta's what? food. Oh, that's a, that <laughs> is a sign. <laughs> oh. a healthy appetite is oh, a sweetheart. Oh, sweetheart. Oh, honey, you, I, uh. I'm just so proud of you, honey. Mm. <laughs> 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 a mess. Did he make you do this? Did he make this mess? Oh my God, this is so cruel. Especially to a housewife. I see absolutely no sense in cleaning it up. He will just come home again and throw me around. <sighs> okay, Pat. Now look, I don't like what I'm seeing. I really don't. And you are losing your spunk. And when you lose your spunk, then you're in trouble. I mean, I really hate to see you roll with the punches like this. I'm sorry, Mary. I mean, I really, I really don't mean to be an old sourpuss. It's just that sometimes it is very hard. Do you have a minute? I'll fix us a cup of soup. Oh, Pat, no, thanks. That's okay. But if you have a minute, I have someone outside that I'd like you to meet. Oh, Mary, I couldn't meet anybody today. Oh, really? No, no. Just look at me. Look at the house. Oh, no, no, Pat. This is someone who won't care about the house at all. This is someone who just wants to help you. That's all. Oh, no, 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 Finds out he will kill me. Which is exactly my point. Uh. Help is here. Psst. Hello, Pat. Mary's told me all about your troubles. Mary. Oh, Pat, now come on. Pat, now this is Helen Dinsmore. Dinsmore. This is Helen Dinsmore, and she is from B.A.D., battered, abused, and dumped uh, on. Battered, angry, and determined. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's what I meant, though. Listen, uh, this is very dangerous here for me, you see, because my husband may come home, and he could come home. No, yeah. Any minute. I, I any know, minute. I know, Pat. Don't worry about it. Her husband's at work. He's at work. Oh. 
It, but he refuses to use the men's room at the plant. Oh, that's a terror technique. I don't mean to be rude, but you've got to go. No, Pat, now listen to me. Two minutes out of your life. 120 seconds. Pat, please listen to Helen for 120 seconds. This could make a life. Okay, but what do we do if he comes in? Okay, Pat. Now, you must remember, now there are three of us, and I don't have long legs for nothing. This isn't much of a home for you, is it, Pat? It's a nice house, but it's not a home. In fact, and, and, I, and I don't want to say this to shock you or to be cruel, but this house could easily be a death trap. Oh, uh, that doesn't sound like what you think uh, And I think like. that you should leave it right away. That, that, that's what she means by what it sounds like. What right do you have to come in here, just, just walk in here and talk to me like that? The right of one battered wife to another. Oh, my God, you? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I, am, I am so afraid. Oh, of course you are. I was that way for years. Everybody loved my husband. He was as sweet as mm -hmm. pie to everyone he mm -hmm. met. Didn't know him, but I heard about mm -hmm. it. He saved all of his hostility and violence for me. Oh, I got it with fists, boards, tools, lamps, anything you can think of. Helen has lived, Pat. I just, I just keep thinking, and I, it's, it's all my fault, and it's something that I do wrong. No, you have done nothing wrong. You see, we always try to blame ourselves. It's because after all of that abuse, we have such a low opinion of ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, my house usually doesn't look like this. Oh, no, uh, no. Please forgive me. Yeah, and now I must come to her defense. This is true. Her house is usually very neat. Oh. Now, I personally don't care for the decoration, but that's just, you know, a matter of taste. It's a different story. So, you know I mean? so, so, if you'll just excuse me, I'll pick up some things. Uh, no, Pat, I'll tell you what, why don't I pick up some things and why don't you two really get to know each other? Do you know what I mean? Why don't you talk over some stuff and I'll clean up everything up. You don't have to worry. Just don't worry about a thing. Okay, Pat? Okay. Pat. Now, you have to get away from here. I mean, men like your husband do not change. They just make a lot of promises. Okay, Pat, I've got to ask you one question, okay? Where do you want me, like, to put the soiled pajamas? On the chair. Okay. You see, you see, I really, I just can't even think of leaving Garth at a time like this. I, I, he just hates his job at the plant, and if you only knew what a terrible childhood he had. Oh, excuse, me, I, 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 excuse me, Pat. Excuse me, Pat. Which chair did you want? Which chair did you want these on? Um, of which? Fine. That's fine. That's fine, Pat. <laughs> it, it's, it's the same old story. But there is no excuse for what he does. Why, any little uh, thing could, could just set him off. You know, last Thursday, we had a young woman who came in. She had been beaten to a pulp for wearing her ponytail without a ribbon. Beaten to a pulp? Mm -hmm. Okay, Pat, now let me ask you a question. Do you want me to pledge the furniture? Oh, no, no Mary, not now. Well, all right, but, you know, it could use it. Uh, and last November, a woman was hit repeatedly with the tire iron for serving her husband too much dark meat and not enough stuffing. See, Pat, let me ask you something. Isn't it reassuring to hear someone who knows the facts? Now, if you'll just excuse me now, I'm going to be vacuuming around uh, here. Okay? My, my intention is not to reassure. My intention is to warn Pat from one abused woman to another, get out. If, uh, if things get too bad. Bad, I can always call the cops. Do, uh, do you, do you have witnesses? Uh, I am, I'm a very good witness uh -huh. here. I have seen her bruised, I have seen her battered, I've seen her in slings, right. I've seen her Would in Would you please sling. turn that off? What? Turn it off! Oh, turn it off! Yes. Oh, yeah, sure, one second, okay. if I can just find the switch. Yeah, that'll just, there, there it goes. That's fine, that's good, okay. Have you seen Mr. Gimbel inflict the injuries? Uh, uh, it, it, that's just something that I really, uh, no, I, I, I really haven't actually seen it, but that's something I don't want to see. I mean, that kind of thing really doesn't interest me, you know, to watch someone inflict injuries like that. I'm just going to do a little dusting. So what you're saying is there's no way out. 
What I'm saying is that there is only one way out, and that's out. Oh, look, I know it's going to be embarrassing to tell your family and friends that your marriage didn't work out, but that's a very small price to pay. Yeah, pay it, Pat, would you? Please, I mean, I am really exhausted. I've been doing this house, and now I have to go back and do my own, you know? So, what you're saying is that there's no way that this marriage will work. Maybe a black belt, an attack dog, a few hours of daily physical training. Uh, Pat, what she's saying is uh, it won't work. Get out, Pat. Get out now. But in my situation is so hopeless. Oh, no! Your life is going to be as happy as mine is now. Mr. Gimble's the one without hope. Look, he's just going to keep on beating his wife forever. And once you refuse not to be that wife... There's no place to go but up. Ah, uh, Pat. Pat. So what do you think? Did I do a good job? That's nice. Thank you, George. It's nice to know that when your wife is growing old and senile, she starts to cut out paper dolls. She has the class to make them in 3D. Oh, yes. These, these charming little figurines are for the poor shut-ins at the hospital. And just as soon as we clean up this mess of our balloon payments, you know, on our mortgage, I'm going to help out there. Miss Martha... It's a calamity. Well, as soon as we clear up the calamity, I am going to volunteer as a gray lady, you know, just for a few days a week. We're being thrown out in the snow. And she wants to do volunteer work. <laughs> oh, George, when I saw Loretta lying there all hidden from view, wasting her talent in that mummy costume in the hospital, Oh, it was so sad. I just realized that we're not so bad off. Right. We could all get a mysterious virus. Yes, or, or be stung by fire ants. Or go crazy and start making dolls while we're sitting in a snowbank. Oh, George, stop all that depressing talk. Worrying about the future like that can give you an ulcer or, or force or force you to embrace some strange religion. Oh. <laughs> All right, Martha. I've made a decision. Ah. I've checked the situation out. Left and right, up and down, and there's only one way out. Oh, George. Oh, George. I knew I could count on you. You are my pillar of strength. Just like in Roman times. What did you figure out? The only way that we're going to get out of this catastrophe is to accept Kathy's money. Oh, George. It's the only way we're going to keep a roof over our heads, Martha. But we had to live on, on Kathy's first payment while you were away. And now that you are back home, it is just breaking my heart if we have to use any of that dirty, soiled money. Oh, even all temperature couldn't clean it up for me. Martha, I know it's wrong, but Kathy made her decision. She wants us to have the money, because in 24 hours, we're going to be nothing but a couple of ice cubes out there in the curb. Is that what you want, Martha? Well, I guess we, ha we have no choice. Just like those poor girls that I pretended to be a hooker with. Well... If we must, we must. Hello, sweetness. Guess what, everybody? I have some wonderful news. <laughs> oh, oh, Kathy. <laughs> Kathy, you have your baby. Yes, and this time for keeps. I've been doing a lot of thinking about what you and Grandpa said, and I think you're right. There's some things that Brian Adams' money can't buy, and that's my little baby. I don't even care if he takes me to the Supreme Court. <laughs> Kat, 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 Kathy, what did you do? I tore up his check. <laughs> so we start with Tom and Mary 
having a discussion about the bedroom. And Tom feels like he's having to follow in some instruction manual. And Mary is trying to improve her lot, which I think she's been wanting since season one to have better sex. And yeah, it's a slightly different situation with Tom being unsexual. Even last season, Mary would say that the sex wasn't great when she had it. It was just good to be having the sex. And now Tom feels like he's being micromanaged. He feels like he's having to follow instructions or that it's too complicated. Maybe sex is more complicated, but it shouldn't feel like paint by numbers or or something like that. It should feel like play, at least in terms of how you are with your partner. If it's going to be fun, it should feel like play. It should feel improvisational. It should feel like discovery. And at this point, that's not what it feels like. I'm not sure we're not in the bedroom with them, we're just hearing them talk about it, but Mary certainly doesn't know how to help Tom get to a comfortable place, and Tom isn't comfortable, and maybe the discussion hasn't said anything more than foreplay is fair play, and we don't know because they're probably not going to tell us the details of what this is. It could just be, try this and see what's fun. It's not, though, at the moment, and that's the issue. And Grandpa comes in, and I think Grandpa is actually pretty wise there as far as, you you know, if if you can make something better, you should. He is actually the most even-handed man about this subject. However, Mary doesn't take it as wisdom. And then May shows up, and May is angry over being raided and Tom doesn't know anything about it. And I kind of felt like it wasn't Tom who sent the, the cops yesterday. You know, we don't have any corroboration until today. So I'm thinking that Merle sent them over, but that, I guess, will be another mystery until you know we find out who actually sent the police over. And then we see Tom at the hospital with who he thinks is Loretta underneath the mummy costume. This is mainly between Martha and Charlie. Martha is wanting to help, and Charlie mentions the gray ladies who Martha will volunteer for. And I think at this point, Martha is about my age, maybe a little bit older, but wow. Getting involved with the gray ladies, that's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it sounds a little more elderly than, than, uh, I think of 50. Charlie asks Martha to pray with him, and they do pray, and they discover that the body has eaten all of the nutrition in that bag, in the IV, I assume. So it's a good sign for healthy recovery for whomever is under that pile of gauze. And then Mary visits Patty. Pat is at the very least in a depression and very clear that Pat is deflated. She has lost all will to move, which I think is the depression, right? It's not just being sad, it's being in unable to move forward. And Mary has brought over a friend, Helen Dinsmore, and friend would be someone that she looked up, but I think that Pat really does need to hear more stories. Now, this is a, a scene which has a few elements to it, right? The conversation between Pat and Helen is undercut by Mary being completely anxious around them, trying to clean. So maybe that's the comedic element, but the thing that we need to hear is the thing that we're being distracted from. And that is that there's a story that Pat is in, and it compares to Helen's story, and Helen has the advice of getting out. Pat is having difficulty listening. I think going to Rabbi Weintraub yesterday was hard for her, because she is literally, she was given the same advice that she had been following for months at this point. And of course, Mary is trying her best to make things better, but isn't. So as we end that scene, 
we don't know what Pat is going to do, but at least she has heard someone's story. And I hope that she can get out of the depression and start moving forward somewhere. Because I generally agree with Helen that there's no getting out of this unless you get out. I suppose that an option would be to get counseling, except that we know that counselors in Fernwood are generally not going to be able to help you. Well, sorry. There was one story of help, but that was a very different thing. In any case, I think that Pat is in a depression and she needs out. And someone else that needs out are the Shumways. George comes in on Martha doing her gray ladies activity, helping uh, make volunteer little dolls for folks at the hospital, and he mocks that. I'm of the opposite opinion, you know. Martha wants to keep moving, wants to keep alive, and that's good. George came to the decision that accepting Kathy's money would be good. It could be. But Kathy came to a more important decision, and that is keeping the baby. So Kathy has torn up the check, and George has no idea what to do. Martha's happy to have a grandchild. And everyone, that was our episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for leaving your thoughts and feelings in the comments. Thank you for having some responsible fun with me, and we will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood.